Hello, this is Kathy from XX Will Travel, and Inez and I are on our annual August hiatus. In the meantime, please enjoy this episode entitled Disasters with Anita Meckler of Drinkers with Writing Problems. This is one of my favorite episodes because I love how Anita took a terrible thing that happened to her, an earthquake in Japan, and turned it into some really positive life changes. And I hope this story will inspire you and probably help you in case you should ever encounter something um, terrible <laughs> on your travels. So hopefully that will never happen. But until then, see you in September. Welcome to XX Will Travel, a podcast for independent women travelers. I'm Inez Bellina. And I'm Kathy Pokerbeck. And together we're XX Sex Will, Will travel. travel. Today we have a special guest, Anita Meckler. Am I pronouncing that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Our very first special guest. Yes. <laughs> Anita Meckler is a librarian and archivist by day and a writer right before a deadline. She has told stories at Story Lab, You're Being Ridiculous, for the self-publishers of Chicago, Story Court, The Cat Diaries, Is This a Thing, and Stoop Style Stories. In her free time, she likes to avoid writing, doing the dishes and laundry by rubbing elbows with colleagues in her field, hanging out with her cat, watching Miss Fisher's murder mysteries while in the bath, dreaming about the Mudder Museum, and day drinking. And you can read more of her writing at drinkerswithwritingproblems.com. Welcome, Anita! Welcome! So today's episode is actually about disasters. And ironically, this was the most, we received the most responses ever to our query for stories to the disaster episode. Yes, which is, I think, strangely uplifting in the sense that we know so many people who had a natural or man-made disaster while abroad. And we're, we're all here. We survived. We're all here. We're all still traveling. Surviving and thriving. <laughs> yes. Um, so we asked Anita to come because she actually survived the Japanese earthquake of what year was it? 2011. Of 2011. That was the one that caused a, a huge tsunami um, and, you know, lots of devastation in the country. And then Kathy has a few disaster stories of her own from Zimbabwe and Atlanta. Yes. Vastly different places, vastly different disasters. Yes. And I apparently have more disasters than I thought simply for having lived in South America, where it turns out my childhood was way more traumatic than I had previously <laughs> um, come to terms with. So... <laughs> We will cover all this. Um, and more. And more. But first, uh, Anita, so tell us about your trip, like, right up until disaster. Like, why were you in Japan? What were you doing? So I was part of a group through Rotary International. It's a group study exchange. So there are people who are young professionals in their field. So they're not students. They're already starting their careers, but just starting their careers. Um, they pick a different country every year, and my best friend, Elizabeth Gomez, who you may oh, know, nice. encouraged me to apply for this trip. So we went together as a team. Um, there were three other people with us, and we had a team leader, and we had already been there for a month. So we, had, uh, we were hosted by Rotary International members in Japan. They were lovely, wonderful people, fantastic hosts. If you've ever been to Japan... And you, you're a guest there. You know how gracious they are about um, people visiting their country. So we had already had a really great month and presents and drinking a lot and eating a lot and going to onsens and all that stuff. It's a beautiful country. So it was actually our last day there. No way. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so they had moved us to a really nice hotel in Shinjuku in Tokyo. Tokyo was kind of our home base, but we traveled to other places. And they moved us into a really nice hotel for our last night there. We were going to have this farewell party. And we went up to our rooms to get changed and get ready. And that's when it happened. So um, I was taking a shower, and <laughs> I got out of the shower, and I, I felt like weird on the floor and thinking, oh, maybe I just, my feet are wet or something and that's, I'm slipping on the floor. 
So then I opened the door to my room from the bathroom and I had been drinking a glass of water and it was like sloshing from side to side. And it's like that Jurassic Park. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? <laughs> begin and you see the water starting to tremble yes yes and uh there was a chair um that was part of the desk that was rolling back and forth and that's when I realized that something was happening and um so I panicked and I was in a towel from the shower and I couldn't find my shoes I hadn't unpacked anything Uh, the entire month that I'd been there I didn't learn to put my shoes at the door (laughs) Um, and threw on, t- uh, they had really nice robes, threw on a robe and, you know, uh, ran out of the hotel room cause I didn't want to be in the hotel room. I'd never been in an earthquake before. So what floor were you on? I was on the 14th floor. Oh, so pretty high up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And my, my best friend and I were down the hallway from each other. So we ran to each other. Um, and then we proceeded to run down 14 flights of stairs. Were other people around you panicking? Oddly enough, there were I, there. We didn't see anybody else on our floor. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know if it was because it was an odd downtime season for them, but there wasn't anyone else on our floor. It was just her and I. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It was had that extra weird, yeah, <laughs> eerie feeling to it of just being totally alone. Yeah. In a bathroom. In a bathroom. <laughs> she was in a bathroom too. Because we were planning, I was planning to go over to her room because we were going to have a farewell party and do our hair and do our makeup together. So she had gotten comfortable in her room and taken her clothes off mm-hmm. when it happened. And so we both were in bathrobes. <laughs> Uh, for a lot longer than we anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened when you guys got to the to the bottom floor? What was the scene like? Well, um, the people that worked in the hotel were very, you know, there's kind of that stereotype of Japanese people with a stiff upper lip kind of thing, and there weren't people really panicking. It didn't seem that way. I mean, it definitely seemed like it was tense. And... Um, we went down there with our bathrobes, and I also noticed I wasn't wearing any shoes because I hadn't put my shoes on um, or found them. And so they kind of escorted us into this other room where they said, oh, you'll be more comfortable here. And it was where all the people in bathrobes were. And, <laughs> so, and so, so Yes. <laughs> and so, and then there was like a really big aftershock, and her and I both, we looked at each other, and we were just like, we're not dying in here. If we're dying, you know, we're going to go be with the people we've been with for the month, you know, our teammates, all mm-hmm. of our hosts, because um, some of our hosts were there for our party. Um but, they, you know, the Japanese workers in the hotel were, you know, they're, like, vacuuming up the dust that's coming off the walls and, and like, trying, you know, there were these huge chandeliers and um, they're trying to, like, deal with kind of the lighting and stuff that's in to try to secure everything. And they're being very calm and just doing their job. And, mm-hmm. and it was, yeah, but everybody else was a little, you could tell they were kind of freaking out on the inside, but there wasn't people being really vocal or mm-hmm. running around. There wasn't a lot of panicking, but you could tell everyone was like, oh my God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So were you guys even able to have your farewell party or was that pretty much it? No, we did. Oh, and wow. <laughs> we did. because So people were showing up so we, we all were down in the um, lobby area, and we were, I was freaking out, absolutely mm-hmm. freaking out, and I really wanted to run, because that's all I wanted to do, so it's that flight or fight thing, and I wanted to fly, fly away, <laughs> far, far away, and, um, you know, we, one of our hosts was an architect, and he said, you know, trust me, we're very safe, you know, this is a new building, we're very, we're Japanese, we're very strict mm-hmm. about our building codes, you know, we'll be fine, um, and I didn't. Uh, believe him but I trusted him Mm I mostly just because my body was kind of uh, reacting to that but uh, so people were showing up and when our party was going to start they said okay it's time for your party and we're like (laughs) what (laughs) and they said okay where's we said where's the party and they pointed us to at the top of these escalators to basement down. Were you still in your bathroom? Yes. (laughs) Because I mean at this point 
it hadn't stopped shaking. Oh, my. So, yeah, I mean, it was, there was, like, the big one, but then, you know, the, obviously there's a lot of after aftershocks, and they mm-hmm. were pretty big aftershocks, um, and the building was still shaking at the time. And what most people were doing was watching these chandeliers that were in the lobby just swing back and forth, thinking, like, they're going to crash at any moment, and they're these huge, huge chandeliers. Yeah. And uh, so they point us to this basement, and we're like, no. <laughs> we don't want to go down there. And it was two basements down. Oh, my gosh. And we were just, like, freaking out. We don't want to go down there. We don't want to go down there. And, of course, the architect's guy is like, we'll be safe. We'll be okay. And my best friend and I were like, we don't believe you, but we're going down there. And we basically just, like, held hands the mm-hmm. entire time going down the stairs. Um, and then we got to the party, and in true Japanese fashion, they had a karaoke machine. Um, it was one of the girls on the team. It was one of her birthdays. Mm-hmm. It was her birthday, sorry. And uh, they said, you should have a drink. And I said, I don't want a drink. I want to be sober. Like, if I have to, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, if I have to claw my way out of something, I want to be sober. <laughs> and they said, no, you should drink. <laughs> so, um, but they fed us, we drank, you know, we sang karaoke, the building was still shaking, um, there were a lot of people who were, um, go in, went into the hotel that were on the streets of Tokyo because they had shut down all the trains and shut down all the highways and mm-hmm. taxis weren't picking people up and, um, so there were a lot of, we were very, very lucky in that we had access to food and, alcohol (laughs) and you know we had people that were helping us navigate what was going on even though they didn't really know what was going on because they said well this is the biggest earthquake I've ever been in my entire life and you're talking to Japanese people who are in their 70s and you're like oh my god (laughs) so um but they took care of us and so then they were stranded in the hotel with us so we, you know, they had given us these really beautiful rooms to ourselves with these huge king size beds. And we said, you know what, we'll all room together because we're used to being, we've just traveled this whole month together. So all the um, women on the team stayed in one room and we gave our rooms to our hosts to mm-hmm. stay in. Oh, and nice. we were supposed to leave the next day. So we were going to try to figure that out. I was going to ask, were you able to keep your return flight? We did because our first flight, our flight was the first flight that went back to Chicago in 24 hours. So we somehow, I just really crazy lucky and, and the people in our, um, you know, Rotary is a very prestigious thing in Japan. And so there's a lot of very powerful people who Mm -hmm. are part of it there and um they I think they called in some favors for us and basically said we're having them hold the plane for you and they rented a bus and it took us probably about six hours to get to the airport which would have normally taken us maybe half an hour wow holy cow yeah because I mean the traffic was horrible they weren't let they still weren't letting people on the highways Mm -hmm. and I mean they're just on the phone you know they had rented this bus for us with you know put all our luggage in they got us so far on the bus and then, um, like a private bus, like a rental. And then they said, okay, we were talking to somebody and we see that there's a train that's going to take us somewhat to the airport. So then we got off the bus, got on that train, took us a little bit of ways Then we had to get off that, get on another <laughs> train, took us, I mean, we couldn't have done that on our own. Yeah. They, they did all of that for us. They were like, we're getting you on this plane. (laughs) And we ran. I mean, we ran from the train all the way onto the airplane, pretty much. I mean, they, and luckily the people that were working there at the ticket counter, you know, they said for people who are going to Chicago or Seattle. So there was a Seattle flight leaving to, you know, anyone who's, um, you know, where we got to push through the line Mm -hmm. and um, went through security. I mean, that was like the quickest I've ever been through security ever and um, just ran toward the plane to get on it yeah uh, so that was really it was very dramatic <laughs> did the airport look like something out of a zombie apocalypse movie <laughs> no you know oddly it's very not oddly i think for japanese but it was just everything was so orderly like there was really no real when it all comes down to it you know mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of panic or you know you see a lot of destruction or any of that I mean where we were in Tokyo obviously we weren't we weren't 
um, farther north where right. the epicenter was, but um, it wasn't, I don't know, they're very good at keeping things <laughs> organized and calm and I don't know, I don't, and also I don't think I really was paying attention Yeah, that much. I was really focused on getting on that plane and getting the hell out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though I really loved Japan, but I was scared. I really thought I was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was it something that had even crossed your mind? Like, that that could happen while you oh, were absolutely. in Japan? Oh, well, you know, interestingly enough, I was the team member when we were all preparing, so we, we get chosen for the, for the team, and we still get five or six months together, so we try to learn a little bit of the language, learn some customs, you know... Um, we have to do presentations about ourselves in phonetic Japanese. <laughs> and it's basically just like, this is what my name is, and here's where I live, and I have a cat, and, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, and I was the only person that sent an email to the group and said, do you know what to do in case of, a, of an earthquake? Oh, and wow. I don't know, for whatever reason, everyone in the group was like, oh, you know, we'll be fine. Right. And, yeah, so then, of course... <laughs> Yeah, and, and Elizabeth, um, when we got into that hotel and we saw the big chandeliers, this was before anything happened, and she's like, oh, I wonder what would happen to the chandeliers if we were in an earthquake. <gasps> oh, no. Weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's really, yeah, it's really odd. that and, and not, like, anything that I read, I'm sure we didn't do any of it. We did not, <laughs> um, you just go into panic. Unless yeah. you've been practicing it, I think, you just do whatever your instincts tell you to do. Yeah, it's true. Um... I mean, Peru has quite a bit of earthquake activity, so at school they teach you what to do in case of one, and it becomes almost, you know, instinctual. Like, every time I've been in a little earthquake or a little tremor, it's like, you know, get up, go under the archway of a door, or if you're downstairs, go, you know, like, go outside, all that kind of stuff, but... um but, yes, I don't know what I'd do if it was a huge earthquake. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. I was in a tiny earthquake in Japan, and I just remember... I was sitting at a desk, and my chair was on wheels, and my chair started to roll backwards, and I was more annoyed than anything, and I pulled myself back up to the desk, and it happened again, and I was like, wait a second, and I just remember thinking that it didn't feel like I thought an earthquake would feel, like it felt more like a wave yeah. under your chair, so... Um, yeah. Did, what what happened at the hotel? Like, did it sustain any damage or? Um, well, when we were running down the stairs from our rooms to the lobby, the walls were cracking as we were wow. running down oh my the stairs. Gosh. Yeah. And when we were running across the hallway before that, um, I mean, it was like a fun house where it was just it was so back and forth because you know they try to make them um, more flexible at the top um, that we were running from side to side down the hallway we couldn't run in a straight line because the building was moving so much and yeah so and I think I mean in Tokyo they said it was pretty minimal damage the uh some of the only people that died were um doing roof construction on a building and Mm -hmm. so it collapsed but um there it just it's very they know what they're doing there thankfully yeah (laughs) and they're very strict about how they make their buildings I think some older building. Luckily, we weren't in an older building. Um, we did have one um, young woman who was uh, friends with one of our exchange group um, women, and they were having lunch or something, and they were on a much higher floor. I think they were on like a twenty third floor or something in an older building, and they said that was really scary. Yeah, sure. Um, but for us, we really were in po- the safest possible place we could have been. Um, not that it wasn't still terrifying. Right. <laughs> it was really terrifying. Because right. <laughs> all you want to do is leave. You don't, because your just body automatically goes, bad things are happening here. I want to go somewhere else. And right. the problem with an earthquake, as you probably know, is that you can't, you kind of just have to wait it out. Yeah. It, it's more dangerous to run um, outside unless you're really close to, you know, right. or unless you are already outside. Yeah. Um, but through Tokyo, that's not advisable no because it's so dense yeah (laughs) yes yeah (laughs) so did it change the way you travel now do you take precautions are you more aware of certain things um i'm really terrified of earthquakes (laughs) um i travel to places that have them i mean i go to california pretty often and um 
I think about it the whole time I'm there. Um, I really want to go back to Japan, but I don't know if I can mm-hmm. mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, it gets me thinking more, but it doesn't keep me from traveling. I mean, other than probably going back to Japan, but yeah. um, and maybe other places if they're really, really high instances, but even then I'm going to go to California, so uh, all the time. And luckily I haven't experienced one yet. Yeah. So, but I, then there's also a part of me that thinks, you know, I lived through something that big. Everything else is going to seem like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know? So we'll see what actually happens if I'm ever in one again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm still traveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just maybe not, maybe not back. I want to go back, but then the other part of me is, like, scared, really, really scared mm-hmm. yeah. to go back. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Well, we're glad you made it out safe and sound. <laughs> Thank you. You sound like you kept a pretty level head considering everything. Well, yeah. it's been a lot of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I did come back with PTSD from it, though. I'm sure. So I had, um, I had really bad panic attacks and anxiety and stuff so I'm I'm much better now but yeah. it's also been four years so right that right. first year was horrible because every time you know I'd toss and turn in bed when I'm sleeping and mm-hmm. um whenever I would do that and my bed would shake I'd wake up and I'd think I was back in it oh. you know and that's really terrifying <laughs> right yeah so and then I'd have to like calm myself down and you know but sometimes your body will go in overdrive and you know, like flood your adrenaline and and all that stuff, and it's really hard to calm down. Yeah. Even if logically you know that that's not happening, but there's an other part of your like I don't know the animal sense of your right. brain is just like I'm not safe, I'm not safe, I'm not safe. You know, so um, but I was a mess that first year. Do you know if other people in your group kind of had to struggle with anxiety too after? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to call anyone out. No, no. But, <laughs> but you weren't um, the only one. Uh, no, I wasn't. Yeah. No, I I dealt with it pretty immediately after I came back because mm-hmm. I had never really experienced. I had never experienced panic attacks before. I didn't really know what that was until I experienced it myself, and um, and that was really terrifying. So I sought help immediately. Um, somebody else on my team did not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they had nightmares, they had insomnia, they just had all kinds of other things. And I think, I personally think it's because they didn't really deal with it right, right away. Um, but I think also it's just, it's just going to happen. And I, I tr- I've tried to talk to some of the other people in the group about it, but people don't really want to talk about it. Even four years later. <sighs> I haven't really attempted to talk to them about the about it four years later. I think I've been the most vocal of all the people in the group, um, mm-hmm. and I for a long time I felt very alone in being yeah. affected by it because it seemed like a lot of people kind of went back to their normal lives, and you know other people, a lot of other people in the group got married, and then they had kids, and or they had you know had a pet or something like that. Yeah. And I had when I came back, I broke up with my boyfriend of five years and I moved out of the apartment we lived in together and I just felt very very alone it was the most alone I've ever felt in my entire life and that was really terrifying and that also does not help panic attacks right (laughs) (laughs) and I was dealing with you know like a career that wasn't really getting off the ground and Mm -hmm. it was really really hard for me to come back um here do you think the earthquake kind of pushed you to you know ending that relationship or revisiting like your career yes yeah absolutely I mean my life I just feel like went like it just went in a completely fantastic direction but at the time it was like I have to reject everything that I (laughs) had before you know Mm -hmm. um but yes it completely I think when you sincerely think you're going to die um and I really really did think that we were going to die I really thought we were going to be buried under that building um that you really evaluate right (laughs) (laughs) and you you know you um see what's important and when I came back um my boyfriend did not know what to do with me um 
and I, he and I also came back realizing, oh, you did not clean the apartment in a month. You did not oh. take out the trash in a month. You didn't clean the bathroom in a month. And and you're not. He's not necessarily a very clean clean person. Mm-hmm. So um, it was really disgusting, and it was really. <laughs> um, and it was just like, here's this home we built together, and you don't, yeah. you know, it's totally trashed. And and I couldn't, I couldn't pull myself together to be the person that I was before I left. Because before I left, I was the one that did everything, and I yeah. worked multiple jobs, and and I did all the cleaning and the laundry, and you know, I mean, yeah. it was just, I, I was like, I can't, I just can't. Um, I am emotionally unable to be everything for you right and um and it really um it helped me focus on myself you know I mean at first it was scary because I was like oh you're crazy for life now (laughs) um but then eventually you know I moved but then things fell into place it was kind of one of those things I moved out of my apartment with him um, I moved in in a building with my old management company that I had lived with before I moved in with him and I finally got full time in my field. Um, I started writing more. I started reading. Um, my best friend talked me into getting a cat. Yeah. And so then I had something to take care of, mm-hmm. um, which really terrified me. There was like a whole thing about getting the cat. But because right. um, I was like, oh, I don't want something to die. I love it and then die. And, you know, I was really freaked out about death for a long time. Um, but, you know, then you appreciate life and you. Yeah. You're like, I want to go on more adventures. I want to, because if I'm going to, if I don't know when I'm going to die, I want every second to be something I don't mind dying doing. Yeah, exactly. You know, so if I die, right, like I would have panic attacks, I'd be in a party in the middle of a party and I would have a panic attack and in my, and to calm myself down in a weird way would be like, well, if you died right now, are you proud of dying here? Yes, because I'm with my friends and people I love, and and I'm having a good time. So if I die, I die, you yeah. know, while doing this. And so um, now I just I'm I'm writing more and I'm doing storytelling stuff, mm-hmm. and um, and I started doing that after, and I'm just being more adventurous. So it made me really want to live life yeah. more. And I also just um, can't be in a relationship like that ever. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think that's a solid lesson. Exactly. <laughs> Especially the whole cleanliness thing. I'm sure it was amplified after coming from Japan. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. You're like, people were keeping it together in the middle of the biggest earthquake ever. You can't take out the trash for a month. I mean, yeah. come like, on. Exactly. It's like these hotel workers were vacuuming <laughs> while the earth was trembling. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you, Anita, for coming. We thank really like this. for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy and I are going to share our stories of more man-made and natural disasters, as long as some of other stories from friends and listeners on the blog. If you like us, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our podcast um, on iTunes and on Podbean. Leave us a review if you like us. Yes, please do. Tell everyone. And that is about it. Um, Go forth and travel.